Hi, Jack. Hi, Max. 200. 200 big ones. Pretty exciting. Very. Um, you're 33 off your dad. Is that, what's a bigger milestone in your eyes, 200 or 234? Hmm, great question. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't separate the two. I feel like both of them will be pretty special occasions. Um, yeah. You know, if you asked me uh, at the start of my career about a 200 milestone, I probably would have thought it would be an easy going. Um, you know, no worries, I'll, I'll get there. But, uh, you know, sitting here now, having been through, you know, some adversity, whether that be with my body or um, with form or the team, um, I certainly feel much um, or very proud of of the last 200 games, it hasn't been smooth sailing as probably what I thought it would have been as a arrogant 18 year old. Were you alive for your dad's 200? Yep, yeah, I ran it, ran it through the banner with him, uh, me and my brother Max. So I was We've about, got footage of that team that we're going to show. That's good. We do. Yeah, we've actually done a reenactment of the photo as well. Really? With my two girls. So yep. I'm sure they'll be getting launched on socials this week. And they'll be running out? Yep, yeah, very excited about running my, uh, my two beautiful girls through the banner with me. Will Miller run? I'm not too sure who's going to be more scared, Miller or Chloe. Um, Chloe. Chloe's a bit of a daredevil, so I think she'll soak it in, who's my youngest. But she'll have to be cuddled, I dare say. She can run. She can run. Okay. Like she can um, semi-run. Yeah. I think Miller might, just being a bit older, get a bit shy from the crowd okay. and the noises. Well, there, yeah, there's fireworks and whatnot, so I might yeah. be a bit messy. Um, you're someone told me that you're the sixth father-son pairing to both play 200 games. That's in the like, league. Wow. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. No, I definitely um, have a massive sense of um, pride about you know, doing this alongside my, my dad. Um, you know, obviously look, looked up to my dad uh, as a young tacker and so proud of what he was able to achieve at his in his career, but also the you know the legacy he's left here at the Melbourne Football Club, and for me to kind of chip away and add add to that um, is something that um, I think I'm even you know more proud of than my own personal career. So you know definitely to, to hit some milestones under under the um, the Vardy name is something that yeah I do I do really uh, appreciate and, and quite proud of. That's my last question about Todd. I think Great. I've had too many. Um, take us back to some of your earliest memories of D's. Obviously, Melbourne support. It probably, again, sorry, Todd, you probably floated to Adelaide and Hawthorne here and there when you worked there, but Melbourne yep. mostly. Yep. I remember earliest memories. You know, I was about 16 years old, and I think that's when the club started to... Realise you I made, You know, came on the radar as a, as a father-son, you know, Played a right in the state champs. So We've got the this club kid that eats football for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. so the club tried to, uh, you know, woo me a little bit. And I remember getting a hand-read letter from James McDonald, who was the captain of the footy club at the time. Yep. And, you, you know, you could imagine being 16-year-old footy nuffy, getting a, um, a letter from the skipper, skipper of the Ds was, uh, you know, incredible. And I've still got that at home to this day. So I, I remember early days, um, you know, Dean Bailey and Cam Schwab and Chris Connolly really wanting to make me feel part of the football club and um, show me what, you know, the, the positives of uh, what the D's had to offer. Um, you know, Junction Oval uh, was a big selling point. <laughs> um, but, you know, you know, I remember as a, as a junior looking up to Nathan Jones and... Uh, you know, I wasn't able to go to trainings at that point, but I would just be on Twitter, just waiting for Nathan to post something on Twitter so I could <laughs> have a read of it. Like, um, you know, I really did dream about becoming a, a D's player. Max and, uh, you know, you, quite, you hadn't quite hit the sand at that okay. time. Were you uh, that much of a nuffer you knew some of the VFL guys or not? Nah, okay. nah, I knew Nathan and that was it. Yeah. Yeah, and then got to the club and obviously it's been well document documented, but we weren't very good. Um, we went through our challenges early, Maxie. Yep. Um, but to uh, you know, stick it out and, and see the journey that we've all been on um, to, to you know, the, the highs of the flag in 2021 and, and in the last few years, you know, finishing you know, top four and being really genuine contenders is something that uh, no, I've enjoyed immensely and you know, extremely excited about what the future has to offer. 
what's been the hardest part? I mean, you've said the first two or three years, um, you've obviously had your injuries. Um, you got knocked out down Geelong. Um, don't need to name his name, but it's D. Wojcinski, I think it is. <laughs> um, so there's been some challenges. What's, what do you look back? What are you most proud of for getting through? What's the adversity that you're most proud of? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the team obviously struggled a lot early days and, um, you know, being part of that was quite tough. We, we lost two or three coaches and it felt like we were, you know, going through a coach a year at that time. Of the, so that was really challenging. And then probably coming to the middle part of my career, uh, I had some troubles with injury. So um, my, my plantar fascias and my feet were, both feet were messing up, getting stress fractures and ankles were no good. So there was a, there was a good um, three or four years there where um, I wasn't able, able to train consistently and perform consistently and felt like there wasn't, uh, I was doing the best I could and you know, I just had to be patient, wait for the body to, to heal and um, finally be able to train consistently again and, and try to improve and get better. So that was probably what, you know, one of the most challenging periods for myself is you know, when your body is not allowing you to fulfill your dreams and um, go after um, and tap into your potential. I think that was a really challenging period for myself um, mid years there, but uh, you know, touch wood, the body's been good for two or three years now and um, enjoy training and playing again. That's, a, that, that's enough of the adversity. Let's talk about, although there is one, one of my favorite adversity stories with you is your under 14s training session where you were mucking around. Um, <laughs> If you, want, if, if you want to tell that one. Yeah, we, we can elaborate. Um, so I don't think it comes to any, anyone as a surprise, but my dad was, you know, he was a bit tough. A hard taskmaster growing <laughs> up. You know, I was always held to a higher standard as probably your traditional 14, 15 year olds. And I remember coming, and that, a lot of that was my own doing because I wanted to play AFL and yep. I, was, I was like, dad, you know, help me, help me become an AFL player and be a good one. Um, I want to know um, and, and learn these habits early. And I remember coming out of a, um, you know, a local training session and, you know, you, you go there, you have fr fun with your friends, you kick around, muck around. And I remember jumping in the car, having a laugh and big smile on my face. And um, my dad was just, you know, I can't say exactly what he said on camera, but he was like, what the hell was that? And I was just looked at him, I was like, what do you mean? He's like, no, I said, I said, I don't know. He goes, what do you mean you don't know? I said, I don't know. And he just, he just said, no, you do know. You train like, you train like <laughs> And, um, you know, it was a good lesson. Um, and I've never had fun in footy since. <laughs> um, went to school the next day. Went to school the next day, wrote a poem um, about my feelings. <laughs> Won an award, actually. It's ended up um, in the grade nine poem um, book that was published yeah. at PAC, so. Just want my dad to love me. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, which he does. <laughs> um, last little, oh yeah, so the happy, the happy moments. Um, I mean, obviously there's the one, game 150 was pretty special. Um, I'm pretty sure that was. Oh yes, that was a granny. That was, that was the grand final day. <laughs> yep. We requested 50 tickets for your family. <laughs> um, that was, yeah, that was probably the highlight, I dare say, but there'd be some other ones that maybe don't come straight to everyone's mind. Yeah, no, obviously the flag is, uh, is right up there. Um, you know, finals footy is magic. You know, just any final, you know, I can think back to 2018 when we played our first final series and I think everyone except Jordan Lewis and maybe Nathan Jones who played one earlier on in his career, it was their first taste of finals football. So, you know, we've just come off this six, six win, um, six, six wins in a row to get into finals and then First final, we rock up at the G, it's packed. We're playing Geelong, who are obviously a, a powerhouse, and we end up beating them in a really exciting game, and then we go on to Hawthorne and beat them in a really exciting game. So, obviously, we went to West Coast. We were outclassed there. And you know, just that whole experience, you know, the boys really just playing off instinct and, you know, the joy of football was, was super exciting. Um, you know, we've had a couple of good wins over in, you know, I can remember back to Subiaco Oval, you know, when we were going no good. Tommy McDonald's goal. Um, 
If you, you know, can think the, of another Subiaco win, I'll be amazed. I think that's, that has to be the only one. We might have had two good wins okay. there. Because I remember my, my old man was always saying how like, he, he barely won one over there. It was a yep. real fortress. So to, to get wins over there was special. And I think the same with Adelaide Oval. Like any real hostile game, um, you know, we've had, we've had pretty good record at Adelaide Oval, Maxi, yep. over the years. Uh, good wins against Port and Crows and even playing Brisbane there at, uh, during the COVID times. Um, your goal... Uh, and then the year to put us up top of the ladder in 2021, it was a good game. Are we showing, is it, while we're talking, I'm pretty sure they're showing that clip. Yeah, they'll, they'll overlay that, yeah. I'm sure. Um, if I can weasel my way into your 200 celebration, that was my goal of this interview. Yeah, it's great. We've talked about everyone except me yeah. in this 200. Um, <laughs> well, my last questions awesome. are about, not you, um, Miller and Chloe. Yep. They will, I mean, will they be in the song? What's their, what's their song vibe? I know... George isn't great in there. Yeah. They, do they love coming in? Uh, Chloe hasn't been in one as a... She's, she, last year, she was a, a baby baby, so yeah. Yeah. she had no idea what That's was going on. She hasn't been in one this year, yeah. but Miller, uh, she gets a bit shy when we're in the circle, but then we get home and she's like singing the song in the car. So yeah. she loves it, but in the heat of it, when it's all going on, she's... It's very She's a little similar. bit timid. George, you ask him, did you enjoy the song? And we've all seen George in the song. He, I loved it. <laughs> Best time ever. I was singing it with Clayton. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they're brothers. Yeah. Um, and who's, who's most likely going to cheer you off, do you reckon? It's a great question. I feel like... Track will be lurking. I feel like track's, track's a given. Yeah, he's lurking. Uh, Cla- class is coming to me. Yep. Even height. That helps. Yeah, and that's yeah. like that's why I didn't throw you up there. Yeah, I was that's like, okay. Forget, there's not someone else who's yeah. seven Someone's got to hold there. the kids as yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. Is 200 a chaired game? Yeah. It is? Someone got chaired off a of 150 on the weekend. Right. Tom Stewart. Good on him. So, no. Nah, if, he, if, if he's getting chaired off, I'm definitely getting chaired off. Yeah, I off think then. 200's a chair. Right. Fair enough. Um, no, look, that's, that's all I've got. I've, I've got. Um, congratulations. Been an incredible 200 games. Um, I love playing if you are two time best and fairest or one, two? One, mate. Just one. one. Maybe one coming up this Maybe. year. You've started well. Um, yeah, you are easily the best teammate anyone could ask for, both on and off the field. So um, hopefully another 100 to come. I've got to hold up my end of the bargain there, but All right. hey, hopefully you another 100 to come. Beautiful. Thanks, Max. I appreciate it.